The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show with the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten and head coach Frankie DeBusk. The Frankie DeBusk Show is presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal, located on the Elevity Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. Applebee's, eating good in the neighborhood. Sodexo, a worldwide leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. By Green Coach Tours, celebrating their 66th anniversary. By Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by. Pick up a Hunt Brothers Pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons, with three locations in Green County. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, Cleveland, and Greenville. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Torrey Slavin throws for 295 yards in the Tusculum Pioneers in three years of frustration against the Winged Bulldogs in the regular season finale, 38-20, Tusculum victorious. Hello again, everyone. Brian Staten for the Frankie DeBusk TV show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. It is our final show. We welcome in Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. Senior day, a lot of emotions probably running high just because of the fact that the season didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. But, man, what a result. Everybody showed up, played for four quarters Saturday. Exactly right. We finally uh, put it together on all three phases for uh, the entire game and uh, came out on top. It's funny how when you, when you do those things that you win ball games. And happy for the seniors to go out the way they're going out. They needed a victory. They needed something good to happen. And, uh, you know, a lot of those guys have, have done a lot for Tuscan College football over the last few years. And they went out the right way. That'll be one game they'll always remember. Um, Coach Steve McGill is retiring, and yeah. it'll be one game he'll always remember. So it's a great way to send those guys out the door. And, uh, you know, uh, Coach McGill, to every single senior we, we talked about, is, uh, has done a lot for Tuscan College. Record-setting day for some individuals and for the team, a pioneer football team that, as far as sacks, tackles behind the line of scrimmage, it just wasn't there. They finished with eight on the day, moved to second in the league in the sacks. We're going to go ahead and jump right into the highlights. Your first quarter presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. A tradition for the Tusculum Pioneers is to come out of the tunnel and start and defensively got a great start coach on this football team, but seeing some of these guys come through this tunnel, and I think all the seniors are out there right now, but it's a long and trying year, but a chance for a possible conference confrontation at the end of the year for the championship didn't play into, uh, I think, a factor for your team this year, nor for Wing. They had a chance, but well, your team really came out and took the fight from them early. Yeah, we're obviously a completely different football team uh, this Saturday than we were in the previous seven or eight. I was really proud, especially, you know, we had eight sacks on the day from a defensive standpoint, and uh, we haven't had much of that production all year. And then we come out and, and get after Halfley, who's one of the you know, better quarterbacks in the league, and here uh, make a big play. I, I think that's uh, big Kashad Lyons, a mm -hmm. true freshman from down the Atlanta, Georgia area, is going to be a special football player before it's all said and done. Brian Alexander, boom around. Damian Herring there on that stop on first and 10. Second down and eight for Halfley, and you know, right up the middle, uh, Dustin Lane forcing a fumble for the Pioneers. Great effort there by Dustin. He's another sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, and expecting great things out of those young kids, and they continue to grow and, and jar the ball loose. I actually think uh, Jason Muling's down there battling, doing everything he can, trying to come up with it, and I believe they end up getting the football back. But a great play there by Dustin, putting heat on the quarterback. Would cause a third down, eventually a delay of game, back them up even more. They'd eventually have to punt. They would force the Pioneers to punt, get the ball back. So they start from their own 27. Uh, Josh Covington trying to get around left end. Uh, Brian Alexander, Fred Dress Terrell tracking him down. I mean, the guys are flying around up there. And again, Brian, we have continued to have great effort in uh, uh, all phases of our game. That just credits our, our coaching staff and our players as well. And you know, here early on, they start throwing flags everywhere. There's a bunch of guys getting penalties. And, 
referee's doing all they can to try to keep it under wraps. It was a chippy start to this football game. It didn't really benefit anybody. It just kind of wasted some time, a couple of minutes off our lives uh, to lengthen this game a little bit. Halfley, one of the best passers in the league for his career, was approaching 10,000 yards. At the end of the first half, was just 6 for 21 as the pressure being applied by the Pioneers. Kashad Lyons was, was rushing him there. Pioneers would force a punt and get the football back. And so for the second time in the first half on the drive, the Pioneers would come out and run Fred Jones. Yeah, we, you know, Freddie's one of the seniors we talked about, and he got his chance to get his hands on the football. And here's another senior, Deontay Gist. Uh, unfortunately, Deontay gets hurt, I think, right here, maybe even on this particular play. I'm not sure. And unable to return the rest of the day, and that, that obviously hurt us a little bit offensively. But give a chance for some other guys to step up and make some plays. Rashad Carter, where would you be at the end of the year without him? He had a phenomenal football game. Uh, made some big time catches. This is one right here. Really good decision and good throw from uh, Slavin there, but even a better catch by Rashad to get us down inside the 10. Rashad Carter for 39 yards. A lot more on Rashad Carter coming up. The Pioneers have it first and 10, looking for Rashad Carter. But this is the play that I think a lot of people were wanting to see, the big 6'10 tight end in the back of the end zone. All right, yeah, the next play. Yeah, good job here, just being smart with the football to Rashad. And then we throw this one up to big Wesley Powell. Six foot ten, true freshman out of South Alabama, goes up and makes a rebound. That's you know really. I, I want to give credit to Slavin. I mean that's that ball's hard to throw. He threw it exactly where West needed it thrown. West went up, and made his first touchdown of his career, and obviously extremely excited there. Chest bumping another true freshman and B.J. Spradlin out of the backfield. Just a lot of young players making some plays for us. Five plays, 57 yards. Pioneers take seven nothing lead. Cody Halfley and the offense come out, and you thought after this pass, I did that. Well, maybe that will get them on track. Keep in mind, the Pioneer defensive secondary was number one in the nation coming in in yards allowed. There was a lot of people saying, well, that's because most teams decided to run. But I think on this particular day, this Pioneer secondary proved why they were pretty good this year. I thought we played well in the secondary, really. You know, we're, uh, we got some young players back there that we're counting heavily on in the future. We were without uh, T.J. Jones, a senior, the last three or four weeks. Ken Agby was a senior that played a very little bit Saturday due to his hamstring injury, and Justin Arrington's the other senior back there. But regardless, you know, we're still playing a lot of young players, and a lot of those guys stepped up and made some, some very nice plays in the secondary. Again, a uh, holding penalty is going to back up Winget here. They were penalized heavily in this first half, especially with holding. There were a lot of flags that were flown that weren't counted as well. So after this, you have a lot of offsetting penalties. So after the penalty, again, Halfley just under immense pressure and under pressure all game long. Great job by our defensive front and our linebackers bringing some heat and making him get outside the pocket and having to throw the football away. Just, again, uh, Nick Smith there, sophomore, giving some great pressure. Here comes Terrence Smith, uh, all-conference senior defensive lineman, getting one of his sacks of the day, just putting on great pressure when we get a chance. And, and we got guys flying around. I think he fumbles the football here, and we end up coming up with it. Brian Alexander would get that recovery. Terrence Smith, one of his four sacks on the day, and that will move him up the ranks here in school history. And sacks for a career with 19, that moves him to second all-time. Tracy Branner was the, the greatest in hits behind the line of scrimmage. But a sack fumble for Terrence Smith, recovered by Brian Alexander, leader on the year in in uh, tackles, Halfley was flagged for an unsportsmanlike right after that, and so add 15 yards to it, which will be tacked on right here. Another 15 yards for unsportsmanlike uh, will be coming up as you're going to see here. I've slowed it down a little bit. Uh, Powell, six foot ten, I believe this is it, takes a hit right after the incompletion, well over. And Jarvis Smith, who was their team leader in tackles all day, boy, he was he was a hard-hitting secondary guy. Yeah, a very hard-nosed player there, and I think that's a really good call, though. West was. You know, uh, couldn't protect itself, and uh, that was a good call um, by the officials. And not sure they made good calls all day long, but this one obviously was a good one and went, now, and went our favor. So Brian Marshall for a yard right up the middle uh, for the Pioneers. They take over first down and 15 from the 14. Slavin will look across the middle and find Michael Jones, who's been slow due to a hamstring, but you're going to see how fast that he can be on this very next play. Yeah, we need him to have some success. This is a good throw. Great job by Michael breaking a tackle, making a good move right there, putting his foot in the ground. Breaks that tackle. He got some great blocking downfield, and uh, that's his first down, the first touchdown as a pioneer. Hopefully, uh, one of many. He'll be one of the guys we're looking to uh, next season as, as we've lost a couple of um, high-powered wide receivers. The Winged Bulldogs trail at the end of the first, 14 nothing. They would score just before the end of the first quarter, I should say to make it 14 to 7. The Bulldogs came out, first couple of series, tried to run the football against Tusculum. That was probably some type of a scouting thing and video. It didn't work for a passing offense 
We try to start turning around and passing it in the second quarter. That's when we return with more. Tennis Gillum leading at 14-7 at the end of one. The Frankie DeBus Show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Dean, what's wrong? We all want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's go! go. Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I know you hit that wall. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! You are Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for 65 years and is the official carrier of Tusculum College. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staden. Tuskegee leads 14 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. We quickly jump into your second quarter highlights. The Bulldogs with the football. Your second quarter brought to you by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Continue to play hard defensively. Just uh, you know, we got a different mentality about us. We got them pinned back here a little bit, and our, our guys are pinning their ears and really bringing the pressure. And, uh, I thought they could block us up front, but here's Dominique James, one of the kids we put in there at Nose Carter, redshirt freshman from down in, in Florida. Actually played. High school football with Andy Rossetti, believe it or not. There's a, it was at Dez Rayford, junior college transfer there, junior on our football team, getting excited, number 94, expecting great things out of Dez. So we do have to stay on sides here. We can't be jumping around and giving him a chance to throw the ball down the field, although we got him covered. It was a good decision there by them and a great job on our, of our secondary. Again, the Pioneers uh, against the second-ranked pass offense in the conference. Swing it, trying to run the football, Antiqua is hit immediately behind the line of scrimmage and then is taken down. Uh, he was hit by Dominic James and finished off by the rest of that Pioneer defense. Now, actually, Brown, I think that was Aaron Morgan coming right. free there, making a play. We need Aaron to continue to do that. He's another kid. We got a chance. Here we got a safety. We really should get the dang quarterback on the ground. and He does a good job getting out of it. And I think Luke Harris comes up and feels out of there and gets him on the ground and makes him punt the football. But uh, just, just our kids flying around doing a good job. Ian Halfley just 6 for 21 in the first half and throwing under 100 yards and he was minus 28 yards rushing on the day. The Bulldogs would force the Pioneers to uh, punt. The, actually, Pioneers would actually miss a field goal from 24 yards, have it first and goal at about the three. So Bulldogs would take over. That was third down and 12 to a first team all-conference Chris Bowden for 25 yards. It's first down and 10. Nolenweg incomplete. A lot of pressure on the quarterback once again. And a second down and 10, a great hustle by Luke Harris coming from behind on Lantiqua. Good job getting him on the ground. There's a great job there to play before by Matthias Brown knocking the ball down. One of the seniors we're going to be missing. Here's Luke doing a great job running him down. That's why we run the football, knocking the football loose. Uh, I'm not sure he actually comes out. I think Laurente Archie's over there that scoops it and ends up trying to get up and make something happen. But, boy, we're, we're, we're making plays and getting the football back to the Pioneers. More pioneer, more penalties, uh, guys on the ground. It looked a little bit like that Carson Newman series. And uh, it's just funny the referee kind of stood there and watched that little wrestling match with, uh, go. But Pioneers would have the football. Luke Harris with 10 tackles on the day led the efforts for the Pioneers on this day. A drive that would stall out, so the Bulldogs would take over. Again, the score 14 to 7 and Halfley just running for his life, Rashad Lyons forcing him out of bounds, but again, Halfley minus 28 yards rushing on the day, but he would run for a first down there. Brown, remember the name Kashad Lyons. We're going to be saying a lot in the next two or three years. Kashad has a chance to really be special, and there he's putting some pressure on their quarterback and uh, looking forward to what he brings to the table for the Pioneers. But here's tremendous effort again. Just, just bringing, that's Aaron Morgan once again, bringing some heat, getting him on the ground. Uh, good job from a defense standpoint, again, bringing some pressure. The Pioneer outside linebackers, Brian nope. Alexander, Aaron Morgan had a big day uh, <laughs> defensively. Uh, Aaron Morgan, you will see him coming up with another loss for 14 coming up. Terrence Smith never gets up. He's held on the play. You'll see the flag come in. Halfway under just a, immense pressure once again. 
uh, as Terrence Smith will come back, the all-region performer, one of his four sacks on the day. Just a given great effort, Brian, right there. Just happy for Terrence to have a great, great senior day, play like he's capable of playing, and have some, some nice stats for him as he goes out the door. Just a great football player and a great kid. Again, Cody Halfley hadn't probably been on – is back that much in a game this year, especially in that first half. A lot of pressure by the Pioneers. And the high-scoring anticipated game that we were going to have was 14-7 to Tusculum at halftime. So we didn't have that. And speaking of halftime, our kick wasn't so successful this year for our, our, our gateway forward Lincoln Mazda field goal contest, but we do appreciate everybody taking the time. Absolutely. If it's not for uh, you know Kevin Grant and the gateway forward people, Lenny Lawson, we're unable to do that, but at least we had the opportunity. I uh, really thought we'd have a little more success kicking some field goals than we did. Mr. Carter, Rashad's fa father, actually the game after the game came up to me and actually said, I was the only one that made a kick all year. Yeah, and we was. made one, but uh, we, we, it was fun. It was exciting. Uh, again, hats off to Gateway Forward. Appreciate all they do for us here. Maybe if he's ever back in the area, Gateway will give him an oil change or something <laughs> for making the only field goal all year. We're back with your second half. Touchdown leads 14-7 at the half. The Frankie DeVon Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Coach, what makes a winning team? A winning team is individuals that are working toward one common goal. Coach, for over 30 years, Andrew Johnson Bank has been a winning team here in Greene County. It has always been our goal to provide superior service to our customers. Andrew Johnson Bank will never quit providing extra effort to make loyal customers in the community. Thank you, Coach DeBus. Thank you, Monica. Andrew Johnson Bank scores points with friendly customer service, top-notch bank products, and convenient locations. Tusculum College and Andrew Johnson Bank are a winning team. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Showtime. Uh -huh. You know what it is. Everything we do, we do it big. Uh -huh. Screaming that's not when we step up on the field. That's not a small town, but we still do it very big. Back and ours, back and ours, back and ours, back and ours. We grind hard for the rings with the diamonds on it. Back and ours, back and ours, back and ours, back and ours. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. The Tusculum Pioneers lead at halftime, 14 to 7. They would start with the football in the second half, unable to move it, have to punt it, and then the Bulldogs would go into a three and out. So we pick up the coverage with the Pioneers on their second offensive series of the second half. Your third quarter highlights brought to you by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Play for four quarters. Play for four quarters. It's all we preached at halftime. There, we're in the dog fight. Got a great game, uh, got a lot of defensive players have made plays early, uh, made some plays offensively as we need to, but uh, still can make a few more. Uh, we just gotta, we gotta finish this thing off and play hard for four quarters, which obviously we did. I thought we was gonna get a pick right there. I think that's Justin Arrington. Uh, am I right or wrong there? I believe that is Justin. Nope, that's John Perry. <laughs> gotta give him credit where credit's due. Yeah, but I have no idea where we are right oh. now in this. Uh, we're in the third quarter. Is that right? Is that where we are? Yeah, All right, yeah. so a good defensive play <laughs> nonetheless. Marcus Foster, one of his long runs on the season, 19 yards uh, for the Pioneers. I guess I wanted to start with Wingett showing them what they were doing. That's right. They were going for it on fourth down. This is one of the most bizarre plays because of the explanation I have ever heard of. Uh, Pioneers fumble it. Wingett has the football, and they said inadvertent whistle. Yeah, that's what they call, Brian, uh, inadvertent whistle, which it was. Which it was. Um, how they marked it off was incorrect to our benefit. So I'm sure that uh, Joe Wright was not very pleased with the, with this decision. There was a, a first half, in, in the first half, Joe Wright called a timeout. 
talked to the officials just because he felt like things just weren't right. And it's, it was a way I have never seen him before. Um, he has just, he was never that way. He is the nice guy in the league. The explanation here is inadvertent whistle, redo. It's not the way it should be, right? It should be inadvertent whistle ball at the spot. Never known there to be a redo in college football. Well, That's we all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the Pioneers take advantage, trust me. Uh, here's Brian Marshall for three yards. Um, they didn't need, that wasn't even a play that counted. I shouldn't even put on there because it wasn't even a play that really even counted. Here it is on a second down. Uh, Marcus Foster for a loss of three. Carter for only a gain of a yard. So third down and 12. Uh, Foster for three yards. Then it is fourth down coming up right after this catch for Marcus Foster, who is vying to become the first back in school history with 1,000 yards receiving, 1,000 yards rushing. And you just let your All-American make a play. Great catch here between two defenders. And Slavin's told us to throw it up. Give us a chance. It's fourth down. Don't throw it out of bounds. Give Rashad Carter a chance. And Rashad Carter is better uh, football player than, than they got right there. And there's David Martin, our facility management director, standing on the sidelines giving us a little pat on the back. 11 receptions, 131 yards with a touchdown for Rashad Carter. We'll be going through some more of those numbers, but um, when you have the opportunity to let that man go up and eat, you're going to feed him, and eventually they will do that. But here, uh, impressed with this play. You come out in a wing tee type set and Fred Jones from the right wing back for a touchdown. Yeah, that's really a good little flip there by Slavin. That's a hard throw to make. Good job blocking outside there, just enough by Brian Marshall to give Freddie a chance to, to get outside and takes off running. He's feeling he's got a chance to get in the end zone, does a good job getting the ball across the goal line, give us a chance to score. Nine carries, 42 yards for Fred, and that his lone reception for six yards and a touchdown for the Pioneer Senior, one of those 15 that uh, will be leaving. So the Pioneers, eight plays, 62 yards, thanks to the redo. You take a lead after the point, 21 to seven uh, from Pioneer Field. Wingett would go uh, three and out, forced to punt. Pioneers would have the football back, and here's true freshman B.J. Spradlin for three straight runs. Yeah, we talked about it at halftime. We needed to get B.J. in the game, give him a chance to run the football a little bit. And one thing about B.J. is he's always finishing heading north and south, and here he has a 30-some-odd yard run, big, longest run of his college career. And Again, he's a true freshman that I hope we're going to get better and better as, as we go along. So B.J. goes for a first down. Slavin tries to find Michael Jones, and He's there, just unable to haul it in. Drops this one, but uh, not very often on the day. As Torrey Slavin set a new single game record in reception percentage as he completed 82% of his passes. And right here, Mike L makes up in a big way. What a move as he picks up the first down for the Pioneers. So it moves the chains. Torrey would be sacked here, um, uh, rarely sacked on this afternoon, I guess you could say. Uh, did set the Pioneers back just a little bit, but when you've got the big dog, let him eat, and they let Rashad Carter eat on this drive. Back to Rashad Carter. They sort of have us covered, I guess, under most circumstances, but not when you have number 13. He's made a great catch earlier, and number 25 there is not real sure what's happening because Rashad just keeps making play after play, and we're going to go back to him again here in just a minute. Rashad Carter, um, just when you need a touchdown. Early in the year, West Georgia, you thought, well, if he makes one catch, their season is totally different. Right now, he's making those catches. Just... Uh, He's just a better player. Yeah, it's a good football player. Great catch, good throw. Uh, three amazing catches there on oh, little number 25. He's not a bad football player for winning it, but right now he's beginning to ask himself what's going on out there. Pioneers take a 28 to seven lead. Wingett would score at the end of the third quarter. Made it a little interesting, made it 28 to 14. Pick that up when we return with more of the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Forward, Lincoln Mazda. Dean, what's wrong? We all want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's, let's go. go! Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I see you down the world. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa! Hey Chris, nice hey Jesse, day. ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> 
pony up, Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the seven ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half price appetizers late night. Anything you'll ever need to rent or buy is at Grand Rental Station. Business, commercial, or residential, from forklifts to backhoes to tents, party goods, wedding supplies, and much more. On the Andrew Johnson Highway in Greenville, Grand Rental Station, 639-6160. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. The special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. Once again, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staden. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show. Tuskegee leads 28-14 against Wingate as we start the fourth quarter, presented by Gateway Forward, Lincoln Mazda. Got to play for four quarters, Brian. It's a, obviously, we're ahead by two touchdowns, but that's only two scores. And here's Fred Jones making some good things happen. Kids up front blocking for him. And Josh Stone and Pat Aiken, two kids that made all conference this year, just happy for those guys. And here's Tory Slavin doing a good job of getting the first down. Uh, Mike Hill's got a, uh, that Freddie got to do a little better job blocking for him there to help him stay alive. But Fred's hitting it right here, making some good things happen, and we're running the football. Don't tell Tusculum that they're not a good running football team right here. 179 yards on the day, wing it only 24 yards on the day. Tusculum threw for 295, and here's Brian Marshall. Well, he outruns everybody to the sideline. Surprised he stayed in. Look at that balance as he'll take it down the, the sideline for a touchdown. That's number 25 again over there, trying to knock him out of bounds and unable to do so. Just great job by Brian, hitting the high gear there and taking it the distance. And longest run of his career, I guess. I know it's the longest run we've had this year for a touchdown. It's 35-14 to 14 with the point after for the Pioneers as we just start the fourth quarter of action. Again, a Pioneer offense, now a Pioneer defense that came ready to play. Uh, they had 10 hits behind the line, uh, 12 hits behind the line of scrimmage, and again, Halfley is about ready to feel a lot of the force of that, this Pioneer defense, looking for Marquise Allen across the middle, and there's D'Angelo Pascal. Doesn't see a lot of action, but one of those seniors, and he had two pass breakups on the afternoon. They call him Booby. Happy for D'Angelo Booby Pascal to get in there and make some plays. And here's Terrence again, bringing some heat. I believe that's, uh, who's that, Dustin Lane maybe? Dustin Lane. Bringing some heat. Great job of them two. Georgia products there getting together to make a big sack for us defensively. Coach, there was a lot of talk about that secondary, but on the day, eight sacks and probably six of them were coverage sacks. Super job in the secondary preventing him from having anybody to throw it to. Joe Nelson, Steve Gibison, did see Kent Agby out there, D'Angelo Pascal, Luke Harris, Burdett, uh, a lot of young guys that are out there. I just mentioned two seniors is all I mentioned on that play. Well, the Pioneers force eight, three and out. And then Wingett would force their own three and out. Get the football back deep in their own territory. Chris Bowden, a 35-yard catch, their longest play on the day from scrimmage. And so it would be first and 10 from the Bulldog 46. And then Halfley, again, would have to start throwing it, dumping it off short across the middle. And the Pioneers very quick, very athletic on Saturday. Afternoon. Great tackle right there. That could have been a big play. But Justin does a good job hanging on, getting him on the ground. And he will bring some heat, putting it on him, making him have to flip it up for grabs. And just doing a good job uh, in all phases right now from a defensive standpoint. Half league trying to just get rid of it, uh, unloading it again, trying to get rid of it, unloading it, and Burdett right there also in coverage uh, with the near pick. So it's fourth down to nine, and the Pioneers continue to bring the pressure. And look, all the time that Halfley had to deliver the ball, the Pioneers didn't give him that time, and uh, he is tracked down by Aaron Morgan. They, we got him covered. That's why he can't find anybody back there. Secondary is doing a phenomenal job. And here's Aaron Morgan bringing some heat and putting, getting us a big sack. Aaron Morgan, who was a guy that joined the Pioneers a little bit late in camp, had some issues with uh, just one grade, I think, getting transferred to Youngstown State, which is where he was. And so the Pioneers able to utilize his efforts. North Greenville made a statement game. He reminded me a lot of Justin Scott, uh, just the way he looked and the way he played. For the Pioneers, they take over. Brian Marshall, uh, he'd go up for 30 yards on this carry. Good to have him back out of Chattanooga. He had 79 yards rushing on just three carries. Best thing about Brian is we redshirted him last year and we get him back, or two years ago, whenever that was. You know, he had an injury and he's, he's going to only be a, a, he's a junior now, be a senior next year. And here's our freshman kicker coming in and good job on the hold uh, there by Billy Poozer. Good job on the snap by first team all conference, Skylar West. Uh, we sort of take him for granted, but he's one of our, our best weapons that we have on our football team. And good job here kicking it through the uprights. Pioneers take a 38-14 lead, six plays, 32 yards after the fourth down, not converted. And the final play of the day, how fitting. 
that it would end on a sack. Boomer Brown applying some pressure on Halfley, and he throws him right into the all-region Terrence Smith. Yeah, that's a big stick right there. Good job by Boomer uh, Sr. getting there the last few snaps there as a pioneer. And 6'6", Terrence Smith, a senior, getting his last few snaps there as a pioneer, just, just bringing the heat, doing a great job. Cody Halfley, he just he capped an outstanding collegiate career. Had 310 yards, three touchdowns, a two-time Harlan Hill Trophy regional finalist. He was harassed most of the day, uh, being sacked eight times. A single game record four times by defensive end Terrence Smith, as you just saw, the uh, reigning conference defensive player of the week. Fred Jones, uh, again, a send-off to him right up the middle. And this running game, much maligned all season long. Over about the last three to four games, we have seen some signs of life, I think, spearheaded by that true freshman and, and B.J. Spradlin. I uh, like the fact that Brian Marshall obviously will be back again next year. A lot of good things for Tusculum. And a play we don't get to see, under center, victory formation. Greatest play in football when you're on offense. Just a great way to, to end the ball game. Happy that we were able to hang on for a big win. Great job uh, by our football team sending our seniors out the door. Tori Slavin, 36 of 44, establishing a single game record for completion percentage, 82%. Coach, you threw to 10 different receivers on the day because you're, you've played the bench. Deontay Gist was in for two plays, basically, before he was hurt. Uh, Rashad Carter made big play after big play, but Jones, Dilberto, Powell. Dilberto had his long play of the year in this football game. Slavin, third string quarterback out of camp. Who would have thought that he would have had the type of season that he did? We got a lot of guys that made a lot of plays that we didn't expect to be playing once we, uh, we started fall camp. But in football, you better have some depth, regardless what your quality depth is. You got to have some people that can step up. And I think we mentioned some guys' names there that really stepped up to the occasion, took advantage of some snaps that were played. And, you know, Slavin, just happy how he performed. Actually performed a lot better than I think any of us truly expected. Uh, happy for him to have the year he ended up having. And uh, a lot of guys stepped up and made some plays. Different year in the South Atlantic Conference for sure. Just to kind of put a wrap and a kibosh on it. No, the Pioneers are not accepting a three-win season by any stretch of the imagination. Carson Newman, five and six. Wingate, five and six. Catawba, not a very good year. Finished in the lower half of the league. Mars Hill and LR were your co-conference champions. Mars Hill goes on. They are the two seed in the Division II playoffs. They will have a week off. Those are the guys that won the conference championship this year. And you don't have those conversations with Tusculum Wingate and the potential end-of-year conference championship shootout from Pioneer Field. Just didn't go down that way uh, this year in the South Atlantic Conference as the Pioneers finished the year again at just three and eight. We'll talk with some of our players who made big impacts on Saturday against the Wingate Bulldogs. We'll also come back with Coach Frankie DeBus and talk about 15 of those guys who made a big impact for four to five years for the Pioneers. That's when the Frankie DeBus Show continues, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mosta. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Consumer Credit Union. Loans? We can do that. Three locations in Greenville and Mossheim. At Consumer Credit Union, everybody can join. Visit online at consumercreditunion.com. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Tusculum defeats Wingate by a final score of 38 to 20. Senior day from Pioneer Field 2011. Pioneers win also ends a three game losing skid and a three year losing skid to Joe Reich and his Wingate Bulldogs. Meanwhile, Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk picks up career win number 80. Big reason the Pioneers have been successful over a four-year run are a few guys that we had a chance to sit around and talk to after the game. Justin Arrington, Terrence Smith, and Rashad Carter. It's time now for our Applebee's chat. 
Welcome back into our Applebee's chat. We're joined once again for the second consecutive week, Terrence Smith and also Rashad Carter. We'll start with Terrence. Terrence, you've moved up the charts now this week. Uh, big win against Wingate, obviously, but you'll be known as the second best sacker, uh, I guess, at Tusculum College history. And I know probably coming in when you were six foot six and about 180 pounds soaking wet, you probably didn't think that. So where has your career come to from the day you stepped on foot here at Tusculum? It's came a long way. Coach Weston had us working hard in the off season. He had on, um, on a nutrition plan to get my weight up. So I gained four. 40 pounds as I've been here, but it's just shot me too. Well, it is a game. Let's go back to this game here at Wing. It really the last six quarters, I think, for this defense. You guys have been challenged from your coaching staff. Uh, did we see the, the fruit of your labor in this game against Wing this week? Yes. Uh, the, we got a lot of guys that's coming up. The freshmen, they were real good at def defensive front. D-line coach is very outstanding. He's leaving, but I'm sure they're going to bring in somebody else. But the D-line defense is sound and, and offense. All right, you forced a couple of turnovers on Halfley early. You got to him. You frustrated him. I mean, he even had a penalty in the game. Did you know at that time that you in his head and that you felt as if you had the game in hand at that early stage in this football game? I, I didn't feel like we had the game in our hand because he's a phenomenal quarterback. He's he's willing to pull out tricks at any time. So I just know we had to play four quarters to get this win because he, he's ranked as a quarterback, yeah. All right, it is, you know, he threw, he almost had 10,000 yards. He didn't get that today. He didn't get to the 10,000 yard plateau for his career because of the pressure you guys put on him. Secondary came in as the best in the nation. I, mean, I saw a lot of people were like, well, they're the best because, you know, teams haven't been throwing. They were running against a lot of option teams this year. I think they proved their, their valor today. How good was that secondary? Secondary was outstanding. That was lights out. And I'm proud of my boys for giving us a good win today, for, especially for the seniors. The seniors played great. The defensive line. I mean, the uh, DB coach is great. Coach Scott, he did a good job. Hey, in a season where there probably wasn't, it didn't end the way you obviously wanted to, it has been a pleasure to watch you for the last four years. Thank you for being here and doing what you have done. The best, almost best sacker in school history. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's Terrence Smith. And uh, we've learned it's from College Park, Georgia. And we've learned that, that Rashad is from Decatur, Georgia, uh, as well. But, uh, Rashad, all right, wing it. Uh, we're the last ones out here, it seems like. It should be a party. Uh, you guys have had a celebration. A, a long time coming in between wins. How good a feeling is this for this Pioneer team? This feels good because it was our senior game, and we wanted to go out with a win. So, And you did it. And you did it, I think, your way in making the type of plays that you have. we have become accustomed to knowing Rashad Carter. You, you have the, the, the nickname, the human highlight reel, I think, for a reason, and you had two big ones in a series. Was it a game changer for you and that team? Do you feel your catch really kind of changed the whole momentum for your team in this second half? Uh, I'm pretty sure it did because I just when I got up, I just seen the whole, my whole sideline rowdy, and I was like, yeah, that, that was it. You can be modest. It's okay now. I mean, it's okay. There's only a few hundred thousand people that may see this. I, I'm not. I'm not real <laughs> sure. Uh, you had some guys come to your side there. I mean, you had some talk. You had some jawing going on. Was it a good atmosphere game? I mean, is it the type of game you like to be in? Yes, I enjoy these type of games because it brings the best out of people. All right, it's offense that uh, Tory. You know, he kind of comes in. You guys right the ship after Bo Cordell goes down early, and everybody thought, well, the season's over. How really good was this offense after you guys really got going? I think. It was it was it was really good because Slavin like he gave us a chance, you know. Mm -hmm. He he knew that he wasn't the starting quarterback where he was like, Hey, I'm just gonna do what I can to get the offense going and he did he did his job. You leave a legacy here that uh, will be unmatched. I asked Coach, I said, are two of the best graduating? And he says likely the, the best tandem ride receivers will be graduating this year in Gist and Carter. Um, if I say to you, is that what you planned on doing when you came in here? Did you plan on walking out of here in school history being the best receiver in school history? Well, when I first came in, I played quarterback, so receiver wasn't on my mind. But then when I really started playing wide receiver, I didn't think it would be like this. You know? How do you walk out? Do you, are, you, are you accomplished? Do you feel proud of what you've done here at school in school history? Yes, I think if I went back, I'd do the same thing over. Like, I, I don't regret anything. We don't regret that you've been here as well. It has been a pleasure. I'm glad that we finally got your hometown right after uh, all these years as well. Rashad, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. That's Rashad Carter. That's our Applebee's chat for the Frankie DeBus Show. All right, we thank the guys for taking the time after the game to not be with their families and, and talk with us as well. Justin Arrington, Terrence Smith, known as 6'6", and the human highlight reel himself, Rashad Carter.
Well, it's time now to meet our players of the week, and we'll start on offense. Our Sodexo Offensive Player of the Week might have to start renaming it the Carter Offensive Player of the Week. Rashad Carter, the senior out of Decatur, Georgia, Stevenson High School, had 11 receptions, 131 yards, touchdown along of 39. His 1,056 receiving yards, third most in school history in a season. He becomes the first player in school history to break back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. He had 1,004 last year. He has six games this season with 100 or more receiving yards, eight touchdown receptions, sixth in school history, scored six touchdowns or scored a touchdown in six consecutive games. He averaged 126 receiving yards per game in his last four and his 70 receptions this year, tied for sixth in school single season history. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Player of the Week, Terrence Smith, the senior from College Park, Georgia, eight tackles, giving him 25 tackles in the last two games, four sacks, single game record, a forced fumble, and two quarterback hurries. For Terrence Smith, he had 10 sacks on the year, tied for second most in a single season history. His four sacks against Wingate, a new school game record, is 184 career tackles. He recorded a career high 17 tackles, tied for seventh in Tusculum single game history against Carson Newman, and he is now the two-time SAC Defensive Player of the Week last week and this week for our Defensive Player of the Week. Meanwhile, our Green Coach Tour Special Teams Player of the Week is our long snapper, Skylar West Newport, the junior from Oneida, Tennessee, with two tackles on the day. And once again, we'll talk about Skylar at preseason all conference. Um, in 2010, a first team, 2009, a first team. Well, let's go ahead and make it three consecutive years, first team all conference for Skylar West. And more on that coming up. Time now for our Andrew Johnson call of the game. Again, we renamed this thing the Human Highlight Reel for a reason. Rashad Carter's one, sure, but on this day, I think it deserved two. Carter, when you need a first down, go to Carter, but Terrence Smith, when you need a snack, a sack or a snack, dial up Terrence Smith. Slavin says, finish it off, big guy. Carter out leaping his defender. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Rashad Carter. Half league to pass under some pressure, under duress, he'll be sacked. Terrence Smith with yet another one for the Pioneers today. It's time now for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. For the Pioneers, 179 yards rushing on the afternoon. Wingett held to just 24, and they came out trying to run the football. Yards passing, Tusculum 295 to Halfley's 310. Slavin again, a record-setting day, 82% completion, 36 of 45, zero picks for the Pioneers. 19 of 47 for Cody Halfley, again, just 6 of 21 in the first half. Total offensive plays, pretty even. Tusculum 76 for 474, Wingett 75 for 334. Penalties, it was chippy early. And if they had counted all the penalties that were thrown, we're probably looking at 50, as it is just 20 thrown, 10 per team. Pioneers were great on third downs for the first time this year. Seven of 16, wing it just three of 14. Red zone scores, five of seven for the Pioneers. And sacks, eight for 62. Meanwhile, this offensive line gave up the most sacks all year for Tusculum, allowed wing it just one quarterback sack on the afternoon. Pioneers victorious by final of 38 to 20. Seniors to talk about. Season recap to talk about. That's when Pioneer coach Frankie DeBush rejoins us for the Frankie DeBush Show presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa. Hey, Chris. Nice. Hi, Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> Pony up, Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the seven ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half price appetizers late night. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market, just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Greene County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. 
Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. The special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. Once again, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show for the final time. Presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda this 2011 season. Rejoined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus. Coach, we're going to uh, view some seniors here that uh, really big contributors to this program, uh, not only now, but obviously for the last four years. Man, I love seeing these guys uh, walk through that tunnel. I hate to see them go, uh, but I like seeing what kind of people they are, what kind of people they're going to become. You know, that's Christian Harrison there, one of our uh, student assistant coaches that was unable to play his senior year. And, Ken Agby, uh, Kent's made a bunch of plays for us in the secondary, and, uh, has one of the higher GPAs on our football team. There's big Pat Aiken, number 56, from over in Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, his family's always at every game, very emotional there. And there's Justin Arrington, just proud of everything Justin has done for us. And he's grown up a lot, and uh, his dad was in the locker room before the game, just so excited to see his son play one more game. And here's Matthias Brown. Uh, you know, we, we brought Matthias in here from junior college, and, his family gets very emotional talking about all the things that we've done for him and how much he's grown as a person in his tenure here. And he's uh, black and orange. You'll mm -hmm. get to hear that song, I'm sure, a little bit. Rashad Carter, one of the best receivers to ever play at Tusculum College, came in here as a quarterback. Remember, we called him Orange Carter there for a long time because he kept wearing his orange jersey. His freshman year, we moved him to receiver. as one of the best decisions we've made. Uh, just a great young man and a good person. Marcus Foster, missed him a little bit last year. Came in here, he's been in here for five years, just proud of everything he's brought to the table. He's definitely grown up a lot and very mature walking out the door. Two-time all-conference selection there for Marcus Foster. Again, had a chance to do something that had never been done, but this guy did about everything for you. And Deontay Guest is Mr. Everything, one of our All-American receivers, probably being All-American again this year, led the, the league in, uh, in receiving. Just uh, happy for everything he's accomplished. And uh, unfortunately, he didn't get to play his uh, last ball game like he wanted to due to injury. But, Here's one of the unsung heroes, Mr. Fred Jones. He's one of our, our class uh, clowns, I guess. Gets to lead us in prayer every, every, before every meal, just that kind of person. Just very vocal, doesn't have a shy bone in his body, I'll tell you that. It's gonna miss Fred's uh, outgoing personality around here. A lot of people don't know about Fred. He can dance like Michael Jackson. Here's T.J. Jones. Just ask Fred if you don't believe him. <laughs> T.J. didn't get to play in his last three or four weeks. Uh, of the season, one of our corners that makes a bunch of plays, seem to make a bunch of plays against Newberry every year, if nothing else. But here's big Dustin Moorhead, an offensive lineman that came in here and had a good good career. I'll miss his family. Every day at the Pioneer Walk before the game, his family's up there taking pictures and got his nephew up there, I think it is, just a, they're, they're a great family. And here's uh, Jason Muling, and when he walked through the tunnel, he, he thanked Chris Linker for all he's done for him because Jason Muling spent more time in the training room than any player I think we've ever had. But he found a way to play come Saturdays and fought through a lot of nagging injuries and happy for Jason and excited for his family that was there as well. He is the strongest player pound for pound on this football team. Here's D'Angelo Pascal, made a couple of plays Saturday. Known as Booby, just happy for D'Angelo, uh, happy he could get some plays. And here's Orlando Price, another senior from over in Columbia, South Carolina, that uh, he's just one of the guys that on the team, enjoys being around and loves. And he made a comment, he's the first person in his class to get, or first person in his family to get a college education. So. He's going to be special one day as well. And here's one of the best defensive linemen to ever play at Tuscom College, all region performer Terrence Smith, all conference. Uh, had a phenomenal day in his senior senior game there. And there's about six, see his family members wearing 6'6 six, six Terrence Smith in t shirts. So I knew who, who they were on the sidelines for sure. Josh Stone for the Pioneers. Big Josh Stone. Uh, happy for him to walk out there, very emotional. Had a great senior year, made a lot of plays, and just happy for, for Big Josh. And, there's his family waiting to accept him as he came out of the tunnel there. So there you have all the emotion right before kickoff. And how do you even get these guys to even be, to get ready to play? I'm not sure I like that, to be <laughs> honest. I talked about doing something different with it. But, uh, you know, I think the seniors look forward to it. I think our underclassmen look forward to seeing those guys walk through that, that tunnel of, of pioneers. And we got to let the emotions go. It's, it, I told them it's very emotional. It should be emotional, but we got to go out and play football. All right, the pioneers had said bye to their seniors. Some of those seniors picked up some hardware this year as well. Let's run through some of the Pioneer All-Conference guys. And we're going to start first team All-Conference, Skyler West Newport, third consecutive year. He's a first team All-Conference guy. Uh, Coach, where would you be without your long snapper? I don't think people realize how important he is to our program. Just uh, 
you know, he's uh, Skyler's got a lot going on. A lot of times, he's very fortunate to uh, to be a part of our program. We're very fortunate to have him part of our football team. He does a great job for us. He's had only one punt blocked for his Pioneer career. It came this year, and it came against Newberry, which set up a touchdown, kind of turned the whole momentum. But he is a three-time first-team All-Conference guy. Uh, Deontay Gist, a first-team selection wide receiver and return specialist shows you just how dangerous he really is. Yeah, all the coaches in the conference feared Deontay, and it was obvious by how many of them voted for him for first-team wide receiver and first-team kick returner, and just a guy that's been spectacular for us here. All right, let's go through the numbers. Lindy Sports Magazine preseason All-America, Consensus Draft Services, Honorable Mention, preseason first team, Dactronics All-Second Team All-America last year, Football Gazette All-America, Honorable Mention. He was a first-team All-Region, two publications, and first-team All-Conference last year. 900 receiving yards this season, eighth in a single season. Uh, again, and he missed the better part of three games this year. 81 receptions, fourth in single season, 618 kickoff return yards this year, third in a year, 21 kickoff returns, seventh in a year, averaged 29 yards per kick, second in a school single season history, first in the league this year in the top 20 in the nation. Two kickoff returns for touchdowns this year, 4,374 career all-purpose yards, first in school history. 1,593 career kickoff return yards, first in school history. 2,500 career receiving yards, second in school history. 207 career receptions, third in school history, fifth in conference history. 16 career touchdown receptions, fourth in school history. 1,642 all-purpose yards, third in a single season. His 12 career games with 100 receiving yards tied for first in school history. Um, and so much more. Uh, that guy right there for your program made just about everybody else look bad. And I saw him as a redshirt freshman and thought, Coach, that guy, who's that guy right there? He's special. He grew, he became stronger, and became a true weapon for us in his tenure here at Tuscombe College. Oh, by the way, 20 career games with 100 all-purpose yards and eight straight games with 100 all-purpose yards for 2011. Second team all-conference, couple of offensive linemen. Pat Aiken, Greenwood, South Carolina, second team. Um, 42 games for his career, a four-year starter, missed only three games in Josh Stone's second, second team all-conference, Smithville, Tennessee, four-year starter, 41 games, missed just four games for his career. Happy for those guys. They've been here a long time in this program for several years, have done a lot for a lot of people in the program, and just uh, very well, very deserving for those kids. Andy Rossetti, second team all-conference, Kansas City, Florida, averaged 40 yards a kick this year, Coach, and after last year I was, un I was concerned, but as a freshman, uh, I think we, we figured that would happen, but I mean, decent year this year. I was really proud. I thought Andy Rossetti had a very, very solid year. Uh, I think some of the things he did, go, the one I noticed was pinning guys deep, making them have to travel a long way. Just uh, Andy's a super kid, super person. Glad he, he's able to get all conference. Second team all conference, Terrence Smith, second consecutive year out of College Park, Georgia. We know what we did in the game. He was a preseason all conference guy preseason all-region type guy, 19 career sacks, 42 career tackles for loss, second and fifth in school history respectively, five career fumbles forced, tied for fifth in school history, 184 tackles, and oh, by the way, the two-time reigning defensive player of the week for the Pioneers. Just uh, will be missed around here, made a bunch of plays for us on defense. And Rashad Carter out of Decatur, Georgia, second team all-conference. You question this, but again, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, he's probably the best wide receiver in this league, but just based on the numbers, 1,056 receiving yards, third most in school history. He was third in the league, uh, becomes the first player in school history to record back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. 12 career games with 100 receiving yards ties him with Deontay Gist. His 2,928 career receiving yards is first all-time, seventh in, school his in conference history. His 210 career receptions, second in school history, fourth in conference history. 23 career touchdown receptions, second in school history, 3,155 career all-purpose yards, 138 career points. He and Deontay Gist own the NCAA Division II record for most career receptions by two players from the same team at 417, a record that likely will stand for a very long time. I call him the human highlight reel. He got emotional with me after the game. <laughs> He's an emotional type player, and he proved it. He laid it out there on the line for the better part of his entire career. He's a phenomenal football player. and. You know, don't don't let that second team all conference fool you. There's only no. three all first team all conference receivers, and then three second team all conference receivers. I think uh, I think Rashad Carter is definitely one of the best receivers in this league and deserves to be uh, first team all conference. But it is uh, it's just the nature of the beast, as you mentioned. And uh, he's a guy that we're going to have a hard time replacing. You know, De Deontay did a lot of great things 
little jitterbug kind of guy. We might be able to find one of those guys. But a guy that's 6'3", 210 pounds, got the hands he's got, made the plays he's got, throw it up, let him go get it. Those guys are hard to find. It's going to be really hard to replace him. All right, that's the awards. We're, we're having, got ourselves a good long show here for you this week. Just a, a kibosh on this year. Not what you expected, not what you wanted. You dealt with adversity. You got a lot of young players that saw a lot of time this year. Future is bright, I think, for this Pioneer team. Probably the longest season in my career, Brian, as a coach, because uh, had such tremendous high expectations going in. Uh, learned some lessons along the way. I think I learned them every day, learned them this year. Our, uh, our football team was good enough to win every game we played. Uh, I continue to tell our guys that. Uh, we, we didn't perform like we need to or should in some phases. Uh, we're going to make some changes on our football team. Um, we're going to be a different football team. We're going to have some different looks. We're going to have a different mentality. Uh, you know, the last four or five weeks, we became relaxed. We played with heart, uh, continued to give great effort, just wasn't able to, to, to overcome and score some points when we needed to or hold them when we needed to. But um, it, it was definitely a challenging year. Happy we could win the last one for everybody associated. Mm -hmm. Uh, including me. It was, it was something that we needed to do. And now we got to let this one go just like we do when we won games in the past or we won championships in the past. And uh, we got to go to work. Coach, unfortunate, but congratulations on the last game of the year. And uh, we look forward to seeing you more. Thank you, Brian. That's Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, 80 career wins here at Tusculum History. And again, the uh, Pioneers finished here just 3 and 8 on the season. We'll check in with you again in the spring. We'll kind of find out how things are going there. We'll kind of give you some updates here through the Frankie DeBus TV Show YouTube access site so you can come back and check that out as well. We thank you for being a part of the Frankie DeBus TV Show all season as long. We'd like to thank Kevin Grant, Lenny Lawson there at Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda for their efforts. Everyone who supported the Frankie DeBus TV Show with their money, with their time, and with their effort. Uh, it's not possible without you guys and you, the fans, who continue to follow the Pioneers. We hope that you will continue to follow the Pioneers 2012 when we travel to Urbana. That will be our first game of the year on the road, the Labor Day weekend, September 1st. Time yet to be determined before we go on the road the next week to West Georgia. That schedule is already out. You can check that out through TusculumPioneers.com. Zach Self, outstanding videographer for the Pioneers in our second season here with the Frankie DeBus Show. We appreciate his efforts all year. Fortunately, we will probably won't have Zach next year. He'll be on that offensive line. And, of course, to Nathan Humbert, who puts a lot of this together each and every week. For Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, I'm Brian Staden. We'll see you next year. And until then, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show, featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal. Located on the 11E Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. There's no place like the neighborhood. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Greenville, Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, and Cleveland. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. By Green Coach Tours, celebrating their 66th anniversary. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.